All right, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank God for your presence this morning. So good to hear uh, so many of you on the call this morning. Um, grateful for this opportunity for us to gather together on this Sunday morning. Uh, so good to hear you from far and from near. And from near. Uh, those that are in different area codes and zip codes, we are just grateful, grateful, grateful for this time that we have together. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 150. The 150th Psalm. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Sisters and brothers, the writer of this particular psalm admonishes us to praise the Lord. The word praise means to express warm approval or admiration of. It means to address in a loud, audible tone. It means to glory and triumph in God. Some synonyms used for praise are to commend, to applaud, to speak highly of, to compliment, to rave about, to admire, to hail, to extol, to exalt, or to worship. Praise in this context is a verb, and as a result, it requires some kind of action. People of God on the line this morning, we can't do nothing and call it praise. We can't shut up our mouths and call it praise. We can't get in our position of comfort and look around and call it praise. We can't just sit back and observe and call it praise because praise requires some form of action on our part. In this text this morning, the psalmist commands us to praise our God. It's not a request. It's not an option. Neither is it something that we do when and if we feel like it. But according to the author, we're required to praise, instructed to praise, commanded to praise. In fact, we were created for praise. Isaiah 43, 21 says that the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Psalm 66, 4 says, all the earth worships you, sings praises to you, they sing praises to your name. Psalm 104 says, to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Brothers and sisters, we have been designed to be instruments of praise. And because that's what we were created to do, nobody should ever have to beg us to praise. Nobody should ever have to bribe us to praise. Nobody should ever have to try to force us into praise. Praise should be an extension of what we do. Songwriter said, praise is what I do. When I want to be close to you, I lift. My hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I will praise him while I can. I'll bless you at all times. I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you, whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all that I go through because praise is what I do because I owe it all to you. The Bible commands us to praise the Lord approximately 250 times, and each time it's a declarative statement. Praise is no mere exercise in repetitive phrases. Praise is determined by the worth of the object being praised, or um, rather, and our praise should match their worth. If they ain't worth much, then they shouldn't receive much praise. 
But if they're worthy, then the praise that they receive ought to match their word. So when it comes to praising God, we ought to consider God's word. And when we check the record, we discover that God is worthy simply based on who God is. He is the God of the universe. He's the almighty one. He's the self-existent one. Uh, He's the alpha and the omega. He's the first and the last. He's the author and finisher of our faith. God is the source and the strength of our lives. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep us, never to leave us, never ever come short of his word. We've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way, keep our lives clean every day. We want to go with him. When he comes back, we've gone too far. We can't turn back. God is, and God is worthy of our praise. But not only uh, because of who God is, but God is also worthy based on what he has done. Now, if your God hasn't done much for you, then you can't praise him for what he hasn't done. But that's not my testimony this morning. My problem is that God has done so much for me that I just can't tell it all. And maybe somebody else on the line this morning can testify of the goodness of the Lord. And I've got a sneaky suspicion that it is somebody on the line's testimony that he woke us up this morning, that he supplies our every need, that he picks us up when we're down, that he keeps making a way for us. He keeps providing for us. He loves us unconditionally. He continually takes care of us. He forgives us over and over again. He comforts us in the midnight hour. And the truth is that you can't tell it like I can tell it what the Lord has done for me. Songwriter said, just for me, (laughs) just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me. Praise is no mere exercise in repetition, but then praise is not just a feeling either. That there are those who think that praise is simply a feeling. But praising God is not based on our feelings. Because quite honestly, there are some times when we may not feel like praising God. Praising God is therefore a conscious activity. We praise him thoughtfully. David said it this way, I will bless the Lord at all times. It's a matter of our will and not how we feel. So when we think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for us, our souls cry out, hallelujah. We thank God for saving us. It is a matter of our thinking. We can't think of God's goodness and then allow how we feel to override what we know. We know that what we have he gave us. We know that if it had not been for him on our side, we would be, could be, should be lost or even dead. We know that he looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. We know that his grace and mercy follow us all the days of our life. We know that he's a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Therefore, when it comes to praising the Lord, Praise is a matter of our will, and praise is a matter of his worth. And since we have already established that he is worthy, then the real issue as it pertains to our praising God must be our willingness. What will we render unto the Lord for all his many benefits? What will we do when it comes to praising our God? What are we willing to sacrifice? for the God of our salvation. Psalm 150 begins by commanding us to praise ye the Lord. Then it continues by telling us the place where we ought to praise him. It says, praise God in his sanctuary. Brothers and sisters, the sanctuary is where God dwells. And we need to be reminded that the building is not the only place where God dwells. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. 
even if not for the same purpose. In fact, there is no place that God is not. So our praise should never be limited to or confined to a specific building because God's sanctuary is not fixed to a particular building. According to the book of Hebrews, Jesus serves his people in a sanctuary in the heavens. According to 2 Corinthians, Jesus makes his sanctuary among his people collectively. And then according to 1 Corinthians, Jesus makes his sanctuary in the individual believer. That means that since God dwells inside of us as believers, then we are a sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. And inside of each and every one of us, we ought to praise God in his sanctuary. No matter what we go through, there ought to be a praise. No matter what the circumstances are, there ought to be a praise. And there ought to be a praise in the sanctuary of our souls. My good friend, Dr. Milton Bigham, recorded this song with the Georgia Mass Choir that says, I've been through the fire. And I've been through the flood, been broken in pieces and left all alone. But through it all, God blessed me. And through it all, God kept me. And I still have a praise inside of me. And I wonder how many folks on the line this morning still have a praise inside of them. Praise God in his sanctuary. But also, it says, praise him in the firmament of his power. While we praise him down here on earth, even the heavens are are commanded to praise him as well. Everywhere his power exists, everywhere his power is experienced, praise ought to be taking place. David said, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Wherever he is and everywhere his power is experienced ought to be a place of praise. The psalmist commands us to praise. He tells us the place of praise. He tells us the point of praise. He says, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. We praise him for all of his mighty acts. That means we praise him for everything that he has done. We praise him for creation. We praise him for protection. We praise him for provision. We praise him for his promises. But most of all, we ought to praise him for his redemption. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For he came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And the record is that one Friday evening, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He bowed his head, and for you and me, he died. But that's not how the story ends. In three days, he rose again. And we ought to praise him for all that he has done. Praise him for his mighty acts. But then another point of praise is to praise him for his excellent greatness. God is great and greatly to be praised. We serve an incredible God who deserves an incredible praise. We serve an awesome God who deserves an awesome praise. We serve a God of excellent greatness who deserves an excellent praise. Great is God's faithfulness. And since he's great and faithful, he deserves a great and faithful praise. Our praise should match the greatness of our God. It continues by telling us the proper means of praise. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him 
with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. I wish I had time, but what that simply means is that we ought to praise God with everything that we have. The psalmist commands us to praise God with everything that we've got, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. He's worthy to be praised. Sisters and brothers, Psalm 146 opens up with praise ye the Lord and ends with praise ye the Lord. Psalm 147 opens up with praise ye the Lord and ends with praise ye the Lord. Psalm 148 opens up with praise ye the Lord, ends with praise ye the Lord. Psalm 149 opens up with praise ye the Lord and it ends with praise ye the Lord. Psalm 150 opens up with praise ye the Lord and it closes with let everything that has breath Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Every living thing that breathes ought to praise the Lord. And every blood bought, born again, baptized believer ought to be compelled to praise the Lord. And as we prepare for worship this morning, if God has given us breath in our body, if God has woken us up this morning, if God has started us on our way, if God has given us youth and activity of our limbs, if God has made a way out of no way, if God has started us on our way, then we ought to praise the Lord. Let all the earth praise him. Let all of God's people praise him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. God, we're grateful and we thank you this morning. We thank you for the reminder. Uh, of the psalmist who shares with us that we ought to have a praise on our lips. We ought to have a praise in our belly. Lord, we ought to have a praise prepared, God, to give you praise. We ought to wake up in the morning giving you praise. We ought to move throughout the day giving you praise. We ought to settle in at night giving you praise. Because if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise you enough. We couldn't share enough of all of the goodness that you have done, of all of the ways that you have made, of how much you have done for us, and we just couldn't tell it all. But God, we've come this morning with a praise on our lips, thanking you for all that you've done, thanking you for last night laying down and that it wasn't our last night. Thank you that you touched us with your finger of love this morning and you woke us up. Thanking you, God, for just being God all by yourself. Thank you, God, for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, God, for the redemption of our souls. Thank you, God, for how you keep us when we can't keep ourselves. Every day is not the best day, but, God, we thank you for the day that you've given us. All the time we don't feel our best, but, God, we thank you for the strength that you provide for us. Everything, God, that we go through isn't always a nice feeling, but we thank you, God, that it's working for our good. And so, God, we praise you. We will praise you. We will lift you up. We will magnify you. We will exalt you, even in the midst of all that we go through. And so, God, we've come this morning just to say thank you. We've come this morning just to lift up your name in praise. We come this morning just to say hallelujah and thank you, Jesus. God, I know that there are people on the line this morning that may be dealing with some issues in their life, but God, I pray even right now that you will encourage them to praise you in advance. We don't have to wait till the battle is over. We don't have to wait until we get out of that situation. We don't have to wait until um, it has resolved itself, but we can give you a shout right now because we've already got the victory. We're already overcomers. We already are more than conquerors, and greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so, God, we want to say thank you this morning. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're in the midst of doing. And, God, thank you for whatever you're going to do, for we know that what you will do uh, will be greater than the former. So, God, we say thank you. We glorify your holy and righteous name. God, I pray for every man and woman, every boy and girl on the line this morning. I pray for whatever the situation might be. 
if it's sickness, God, if it's bereavement, God, if it's a broken heart, God, if it's a confused mind, if it's some decision that needs to be made, God, I pray even now that they will praise you in advance for the resolution that you've already provided for whatever it is that they're dealing with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for being God and God all by yourself. Thank you, God, for making ways out of no ways. Thank you, God, for forgiving us over and over again. Thank you, God, for loving us better than we could ever love ourselves. God, you know what's going on around us. You know what's taking place in our world. You know, God, all of the issues that we're faced with. And so, God, we pray for the strength that we need to get through. We pray, God, that you will uh, regulate our minds so that we can make the decisions, the right decisions that need to be made. And then, God, we thank you for allowing us to be instruments that can be utilized, not just to give you praise, but also to do your will. So, God, empower us now, God, to know what to do, and then empower us, God, that we might be able to do what you're expecting us to do in these last and evil days. And we will give you glory and we will give you honor, and we will sit and watch and see the salvation of the Lord unfold itself in our world. God, again, we say thank you. And as we prepare to go into worship today, God, I pray that you will allow us to praise you like we've never praised you before. Worship you like we've never worshiped you before. Glorify you like we've never glorified you before, because your command is that everything that has breath ought to praise the Lord. So, God, again, we say thank you. And I pray, God, for each and every preacher and teacher this morning that will proclaim your gospel, that you will empower them to be an impact on the people that you will have before them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for what you've done, and thank you for what you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 Amen.